My role is, Paul said, that we have one, we owe man only one thing. You know what that is? We owe man only one thing. To love them. That's, all, that's my only homework. Not to judge them. I'm not a police. Not to correct them. Not to make sure they never sin. One, uh, one author said this about children. He said, parents like, are trying so hard to have their kids not sin. You know? But if you look at God had the first parent. He created the first parents in a perfect garden. Perfect parents in a perfect garden. No sin. And he couldn't, God could not keep his children from sinning. In a perfect place, in a perfect garden with no old sin nature. We're not going to keep our children from sinning. But you know what? That's not our job. Parents' job is not to keep our children from sinning. Because you know what? They're sinners just like us. What is our homework? A parent's homework is to love their children and to act in their best interest. That's what love does. It just acts in their best interest. I have a man who's in a real struggle because his son has been arrested. and He was at a party. I mean, the kids kind of got an attitude, you know, like young guys can get attitudes. Especially American kids can get attitudes. But he's got like an attitude. And the first, a few weeks ago, he like, he like dropped some bad words on a, on a police officer and screamed at him, and so he got ar arrested. And he only spent a night in jail. He was on probation. And then some weeks later, he went to a party, and this guy was pushing him around. The kid picked up a stone and threw it. The kid was kind of far away. He threw it at the kid, and the kid wasn't watching, and, and he hit the kid in the head. So the kid, you know, he ended up going to the hospital. He had some stitches. So he not only was arrested for, uh, there was three or four counts of things, but also he was off probation. So he got arrested the night that he hit the kid in the head. And then two weeks later, when his probation officer found out, he was arrested a second time. So now, and his dad is trying to figure out, what should I do here? What should I do? He's, he's fighting a struggle of love for his son. A real struggle of love. It's expensive. Lawyers are expensive. We have a friend, my wife and I have a friend who mortgaged their house $25,000. It cost them to get their son a good lawyer because he had, was dealing drugs on a college campus. He's a great kid, sport athlete and everything, but fell into this sin. And his parents mortgaged their house for their son. And they're still paying for it. This is 15 years later. They're still paying for it. They, they had a, a, a labor of love for their son. And I mean, that's the way we are. Right? And that's the way parents are. My daughter today, I asked you to pray for my daughter. Her name is Lizzie. She sang here last week. She went back to Turkey. She's pregnant, but she didn't tell me until the day before yesterday. So now I have uh, two pregnant my son's wife is pregnant, due in August, and now my daughter is pregnant, due in September or October. But she has like this very, very severe case of morning sickness. She's been in the hospital for two days. Uh, she's got an IV. She can't eat. She can't drink. She just throws everything up. You know? So they're in Turkey. They're not like here in Hartford County. So they're over in Turkey, and we're trying to figure out what what should happen, you know, what should we do? And of course, she's with her husband over there, but gosh, it just hurts a father's heart to have, to have your daughter, you know, go through that. She just, you know, she's kind of getting weak, and, it, you know, she's just really, really, really sick. And uh, so if you could pray for her, that would be, that would be great. Thank you for that. Okay, so anyway, let's, let's just, let's finish. And um, we're not going to get through all the don'ts. But we can stop with love things, no evil. What freedom it is, isn't it? I'm going to walk around the earth amongst all these evil people, and I don't see evil. I see people. The value of the person. Uh, we just got a note from Paula's brother. Paula's sister died uh, of AIDS you know, some, some years back in 1990. Uh, Six, no, nine, whatever. It was a while ago. She died of AIDS. Her husband, her
her husband actually is the one who gave it to her. That was 22 years ago, I think some over 20 years. Since that time, the family have, has tried to write letters to him, tried to reach out to him, um, but he never wrote back to them. And Paula's brother finally, finally um, wrote to him, and he wrote back, and he said, I have been living in so much, so much guilt, so much shame, so much... He said, for 18 years, I couldn't even cry because there was no sorrow. There was only shame in me. There was only anger in me against myself because I, I killed such a beautiful person because he really loved him. her name is Meg. And uh, he said, Eight, just three years ago, I actually cried for the first time. I, I actually have sorrow because of what I did. And the, the connection happened. You know, her brother got to see this man and the man is like, you know, he, he, he still has, he, he has AIDS and He's, but he's close to 60 years old now. And I had a hard time with this guy. I had a real hard time that he would have a homosexual lifestyle that would cause, you know, he was bisexual, so the homosexual side is what brought AIDS into, into the picture. And I had a hard time with him. But God, God really, through Paula's brother, who was an amazing Christian guy, he really had the heart of God towards him. And I didn't. I thought that this guy should, this guy should suffer or something, you know, because of what he did. But this, this, it happened just when this message was going to be preached, you know, that God is telling us, love doesn't think evil. You can't look at him and think evil of him, because Christ came to die for him. He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And when the evil comes into your mind like it does all the time. We just cast it down and we say, no, no, I, I need to love. Christ loves this person, I'm gonna love this person. Christ doesn't judge them, I don't judge them. Christ forgives them, I forgive them for my children over and over and over and over again, my neighbor, my enemy, and even, of course, my friends. So thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for his love toward us. Let's pray. Okay? Wow, Father, we're just thankful this morning that you revealed to us your heart. Thank you for this study on, on your love. Thank you, Lord, for reaching into our hearts and shining your light in our souls. Thank you for showing us your Son, full of grace and truth. Your son, who when he looked out on the world, did not see sin, but he saw redemption. He knew why he came. He came to seek and save those who were sinners. Lord, we thank you that when we were yet enemies, you came and died for us. That you manifested your love toward us. Love is not from us. Love is from you. We receive it this morning, Lord. May our hearts be open to your love. May we not push it away, try to earn it or buy it. Thank you, Father, for this morning. Bless our final song here. Bless us as we go into the world, into our workplaces, into our schools, wherever we might be. And may we have a skip in our step because of your love for us. We thank you in Jesus Christ's name this morning for these things. Amen. Let's stand up.